Hey everyone and welcome to another newscast. My name is Sam Healy and in this video we're going to tell you all the latest news about our company as well as the projects that we have going on right now. As always, if you don't want to watch the entire video, you can skip to the parts that interest you by utilizing the timestamps in the description below. For Time of Legends Joan of Arc this week, we have a bit of a fancier spreadsheet to show you this time. As you can see, the number of green cells continues to grow with each update. Reliquary is now done, and the development for the solo scenarios by Vesuvius Media is done as well. And we have play tested and checked internally all of those scenarios, which are all to our desired standard. So, translation of them, as well as all the core box scenarios, is in progress. Moving on to Solomon Kane, a variety of news for you this week. First of all, the production of the components is moving along well. The miniatures mass production has been finalized for some time now, and we are currently in the process of printing the paper components like cards and tiles, etc. As you know, we are in constant contact with the factory every step of the way, and this has helped us catch a mistake before actual production began. It was brought to our attention that the tiles of the game were scheduled to be printed in a thinner cardboard than what we chose. So we asked the factory to send us samples of the tiles. And you can see them in the pictures that follow. So here in the first picture, you can see the Solomon Cain tiles alone, and you can see that they are very thin. In comparison, you can see them in the second picture next to some Reichbusters tiles, which are thicker. We believe that this will compromise the quality of the tiles and that they will end up being warped. So we've asked the factory to switch to the original thickness, the ones that you saw uh, in Reichbusters. For the moment, th there's no impact in the production time frame, as this mistake was caught before the production of the tiles began. However, increasing the thickness of the tiles means that now they don't fit in the core box, so they will have to be split between the core and the arsenal box. As the inner tray for the arsenal box has not yet been mass produced either, we proposed a modification so it can fit the necessary tiles. We've asked the factory for a prognosis with regards to potential delay. Um, we're expecting an answer soon, and as soon as we have one, we'll let you know. We are being optimistic at this point, however, as neither the tiles nor the tray from, from the arsenal box have been mass produced yet, which means that the factory hasn't allocated the necessary time for their production. In other news, we have verified the molds we have for Wave 2, and they are currently being produced. If you want to learn more about this step and the process and what it includes, we've included an in-depth article on our blog which you can find in the description below. Other preparations for Wave 2 production have already started. In terms of development, we are currently laying out in English the Heart of Africa expansion. Blind playtesting for this has finished as well. Translation is continuing and is an ongoing process. We'll get back to you with more details whenever there is something major to share. Just a couple tidbits of information for Reichbusters this week. The Errata Pack will be released in both languages in PDF format online by October 14th. And we'll update you on the printing of the physical copies as soon as we have word from the factory. We originally wanted to try and send the sleeves with the Errata Pack, but finalizing the Errata Pack took longer than we anticipated, and we didn't want to hold up the sleeves any longer. So the sleeves were sent along with the Super Fantasy Brawl fulfillments, and some backers have already begun receiving their address verification emails for them too. So be on the lookout for those emails as fulfillment will begin for the sleeves after Super Fantasy Brawl is complete. For Super Fantasy Brawl this week, we have a bit more information on shipping. Generally speaking, we expect shipping in all regions to finish by the end of October. Meeple Logistics has told us that they will finish fulfillment by the end of October. They have also sent us some pictures of the packing process at their hub. So here's a little sneak peek of what happens there. 
QML has also said that they anticipate finishing fulfillment by the end of October, even though their queue of fulfillments is completely slammed right now, and they gave us October 19th as the date when they would begin shipments. Of course, we've asked them to expedite this process as much as possible, and they've said that they will do the best they can to get the ball rolling as quickly as possible. Our Oceana Hub has told us that shipments for Australia and New Zealand will finish today. So, as always, be on the lookout for those address verification emails and reply as quickly as you can so that the process can go as smoothly and as quickly as possible. For Hell the Last Saga, our four literary authors met together physically for the first time. A truly historic moment, as they're all references in the world of role-playing games, novels, video games, and comics in France. This ultra-friendly meeting was an opportunity to exchange new ideas in person and consider how best to write together based on the different points of view of the heroes who make up the Peregrine Clan. Depending on the song, the introductions, narrative pivots, and conclusions, the scenarios will speak through the heroes, which will allow their personalities to be developed a little more and bring their personal views into perspective. The presence of different literary styles will help embody the heroes whose motivations and beliefs are all different and even opposed in some cases. Please don't worry about coherence and style harmony. The amazing Anne Vettelard will be in charge of this and will make sure that there are no contradictions or breaks in tone throughout the whole narrative campaign. We also welcomed our friends David Rylia, community manager and creator of the Facebook group for Hell the Last Saga, and Pitt de Cazernal, French coordinator for Peterson Games, who kindly came to test Hell during a filmed game with our new broadcasting system. This game, which is currently being edited, will hopefully be broadcast next week and will let you see more closely the physical game components in action. Nothing beats a real game on a real tabletop. And finally, we have our first true update for Darkest Dungeon the board game. As you may or may not know, this is an adaptation of Red Hook's acclaimed Darkest Dungeon video game in which you strive to cleanse a manor and its surroundings of all evil, hordes of undead, foul beasts, and eldritch abominations. And finally, either at death's door or at your wit's end, you'll have to uproot evil itself from the darkest steps of this cursed estate. Darkest Dungeon is a fully cooperative dungeon crawl game in which players take on the role of adventurers. Although brave and determined, adventurers are only human. They're prone to the madness and pain the twisted dwellers of the dungeons will inflict upon them. Death can occur, but it's not the worst fate. Heroes can also be driven mad and beyond help. The game is played in campaigns of 11 missions. To reach the Darkest Dungeon itself, players will undertake three missions per threat level and vanquish the boss. Then, they will be strong enough to face the horrors of the Darkest Dungeon. They may emerge victorious if they dispatch the source of evil that plagues the land. For each hero, select three skills out of seven before heading into your mission. And you can also level the heroes up to gain access to more skills. In each room, pick the most suitable stance to best resolve the conflict. Then, on each turn, a player chooses two of the available actions of moving, interacting with the environment, changing their stance, or using a skill, if eligible, for their current stance. Triumph over encounters, resist rampant madness, and emerge victorious before throwing yourself into another battle. Between the missions, you can spend your time in the hamlet, visiting various buildings to find relief from the physical and mental trauma you've just endured. Restore the hamlet to its former glory, and it will reward you and help you to fulfill the ultimate goal. This project is going to be going to Kickstarter in either October or November, so keep your eyes peeled and your ears open for the forthcoming announcement. In the meantime, for more information, and a bit of fun, be sure to join the Darkest Dungeon, the board game, Facebook group. 
So remember that Leo will be live later today at 6 p.m. GMT, 1 p.m. Eastern Time on our YouTube channel with a live Q&A in English and at 8.30 p.m. Paris Time with a live Q&A in French. So if you uh, have any questions or anything like that, make sure that you tune in there. But that's it for this week. Stay home, stay safe, and play some games while you're at it. We'll see you on the flip side. Take care. <music>